Page 71, Shenandoah. This is a bit about music theory. This is another lead sheet where they give you the melody and the chords and you got to improvise the stuff. Well, it also presents some interesting theory things on page 70, so let's cover those briefly. I don't really teach a lot of music theory, but I'll cover it. Okay. They give you the symbol review of G major, G minor. G major is just the letter G. It could have a capital M, but it's not required. But just a G. If it's anything but major, they have to tell you what it is. So G minor, it needs a little M. Not a capital M, that would be major. It's got to be a little M, minor. Okay. Primary chords and secondary chords. Well, you know what the primary chords are. It's a 1, 4, and the 5. Well, we do 5, 7, 2, but the point is a 5. It's, it's chords built on the 1, 4, and the 5 steps. 1 step, 4 step, 5th step of the scale. I'm in C major here. Secondary chords are the others. Well, most of the others. The 7th chord is a weirdo. Forget it. It's got to be one in every family, don't you know? It's, but the others are uh, the two, the three, and the six. And the other chords, they're all minor. And you can memorize it that way too, but I prefer you just memorize the scales, learn the scales, and you know what they are. Because you would know that D major has two sharps in it, and it would be here. So that has to be a D minor. However, this works too. The secondary chords are all minor, except that, well, forget the seventh. So the seventh chord is different. It's a diminished. Hmm. But we'll talk about that later. Triads in G major. We're in G major here. I'll get in the right key eventually. And again, it's, you got to stay in the key you're in. G major is one sharp. So when we do these chords, we got to use the, G, the F sharp. So here, here. Gotta, gotta use the F sharp. F sharp. F sharp. So each of these, I gotta use an F sharp because I'm in key of G major. So one chord, and the four chord is the C chord, and then the five chord is the D. It's got an F sharp. Eight. Eight. We do the five, seven, C. It's here, here. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. Now for Shenandoah, we need these chords in this piece. However, for with any lead sheet thing, the first thing you got to do is make, can you play the melody? Figure that out. Because you want to be able to spend your time focusing on the improvising, so the melody's got to be pretty automatic, pretty much. Not totally, but pretty much. So let's just go over the melody here at the beginning. It's a pickup beat or pickup note. It's on the end of four. Four and. and the, I like this fingering. Three, two, one. I like using different fingerings on repeated notes most of the time. So this is fine. It sets us up. Thumb. This way and we're in position for the G. Don't forget the F sharp. So let's. And two and three. Leave your hand where it is, just a thumb down. Measure five, one, and two. Now it's thumb three. Cross over. There's other fingerings you can use also, but that's fine. So again, five, measure five. One and two and three. One and two and three and four. On measure on beat four, you have a rest. An eighth rest, so come up. One and two and three and four. And two and three. And the two, two and three. And one and two and three. And closed position. Don't worry about a closed position. That's referring to the chord. I'll come back to that later. So make sure you can get the melody okay. If, you want to try the dynamics and get into the melody? Okay. Lift up. It's a, it's a new sentence. A new phrase. Lift up. Now here you have to lift up. up. There's a rest. Christian. And then come back down. So you can get, get into the melody a little bit, kind of experiment with it, and then we can think about this accompaniment. Well, let's just do block chords at first. Let's just get the chords down. So we have a G chord, 
And the next measure is G in parentheses. Don't need that. You just keep the same chord until they give you another one. So we'll do a G chord anyway. And then measure three. Now we have a C chord. And the close position means stay where you're at. We don't come up to root or down to root. Don't move around. Stay close to where you're at. So it's just a four chord. Here, and then G chord. And then an E minor chord. Well, what's an E minor chord? We'll look it up. It's in the key of G. It's a six chord. So G. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're in the key of G, so we're just going to... It's an E minor chord. A six chord, a secondary chord, is a minor chord. It works out. It's an E, e minor. Now, you don't have to play it in root position. You can play it... They didn't say close position, but it could have been. So you're up here, G, you can do the E minor chord, real simple, by just moving the thumb up. That's an E minor chord. It's, this is the chord, if I put the E on top, that's it. So I can play that in close position too. Here, and then C position, I, I can just come up here. So I'm not moving around at all, but I'm changing these chords just by... And there they're telling you close position. And then for measure eight, we got the B minor chord. Well, again, in key of G, one, two, three. It's a it's a third a three chord. So just there and stay in the key of G. Just notes in key of G. And that's it. Well, that's a B minor chord. Well, the three chord is a minor chord in the key of G. So that would be it. So we're we've here for here, and if I want that B minor chord. Here to here. Now you can figure that with two if you like. The point is, all I did is change the bottom note from a G to a B minor chord, G, and then a D7 chord. Well, in the key of G major, one, two, three, four, five. A D7 chord is a five-seven chord. We added it's a five chord, but it's kind of added a bit of tone. Blech. Tastes terrible. And then we use the, we put the F on the bottom, and it's here. That's the D7 chord, or 5-7 chord. So I'm, I'm down here in G, I just want a 5-7 chord. Right there, that's it. That's the D7 chord. So I figure out the chords. Now can I play it with the melody? Well, I don't know, because I don't have to play it here, I play it down here. What do you like to hear? I mean, it's up to you and the sounds you're getting. You judge it. Right now, we're just thinking about chords, so it's here. Yeah. And a G, G chord, and then a C chord, a G chord, and then an E minor chord. Remember, I just the thumb comes up, and then C chord. G chord, B minor chord, and remember on the B minor chord we just get F. Again, G, and then B minor, just the F. You can do that if you'd like. Or figure the G chord this way. And it makes it a little easier. And then back to the G chord, D7. And you get the chords figured out. And when you do that, then we can start thinking about rhythms and broken chords and altering this accompaniment. And it's entirely up to you and your imagination. Use some of the broken chords we've used in the past. Here, half notes, whatever. with all the Alberti bass we've been doing. Do that. So forth. You don't have to play quarter notes or whole notes or eighth. No, you break them up. Different rhythms. So 
forth. Just play around with you. It doesn't have to be here. You can play it here. You can extend it as you want. How fast do you want to get? It's entirely up to you and your imagination what you want to do here. Have fun with it. Experiment. Because all the time you're playing around and doing that, you're actually learning a lot by doing this. It really will help you.